Hello and welcome to how to use concurrency settings. So you may have a situation where you want the player to drop an item on the floor and make it make a noise when it hits the floor. Okay. And the way you normally do this is you have a hit event triggered on the physics actor and play a sound at a location of the hit. Okay. A uh, bit well, or the actual object itself. Either way, the hit location or the world location. Either one. But you've got this simple effect going on. The problem you have with this, though, is that the hit event triggers when any sort of movement hits something else. So even for the slightest movement, it will trigger. And therefore, you get this problem where it triggers loads of times and you get a weird distorted noise. So I'm going to hit play now and show you that. Now I drop it. Yeah, we get that ugly noise that we don't want. So I'm going to show you how to fix that with the concurrency settings. So if you go back to where we do the play audio, and if you open up the advanced options, you'll see in there concurrency settings. And concurrency settings allow you to basically stop audio tracks doing just that, where they're playing all at the same time. You can limit how often they play, how many times they can be played together, and so on. So on the concurrency settings here, we're going to create one. I'm going to go to my audio folder. Right click, go down to sounds and sound concurrency. And we call this one dropped item concurrency. And open it up. And in here, you've got a few settings you can change. The most important ones are the ones at the top. The volume scaling handles how audio can be ducked in and out and uh, recovered from being lost. And the voice stealing is for like voice acting stuff, which we don't need to worry about. So over here is the main bit up top the max count limit to owner resolution rule and retrigger time the max count is how many of these audio clips can be played at the same time so if you put 16 it means they can only be playing 16 of these at the same time which can obviously sound quite bad the limit to owner is means that only the owner of the object can hear it the resolution rule so when it starts filtering them out what's the rule is it going to use to help filter these things out so you've got stop farthest from than the oldest, which is probably the best one you can be using for most of the time. But there are many other sort of variations and combinations of these rules. And then finally you've got retrigger time. Retrigger time is how much time is happening between each play of an audio. So if something if you can play another sound within that time frame, it won't play. So I'm going to do for my one retrigger time of 0.2. Okay. And save that. I'm then going to go back to my extinguisher and set my concurrency settings to my dropped item concurrency. Now let's take a listen to how that's different. Walk up to my fire extinguisher and drop it. So as you can see, there's 0.2 gap between each of the tracks being played. However, the hit event is still triggering even if it looks like it's staying still because the slightest amount of velocity is going to trigger it. So a way around that is we usually check the velocity of an object when it hits the ground to see if it's worthy of making a noise. That way we filter out the ones that are below too small of a value. So I'm going to go to my sound here and I'm going to get my component and I'm going to get the velocity of the component, get the vector length and I'm going to check if this vector length is greater than and I'm going to put in 80. So it's going faster than 80 units per second. It's then going to play this sound. So it should only happen a couple of times as it's bouncing around. So let's take a look at that now. And pick it up. Yeah, much, much better. Perfect. So there you go. We've got concurrency settings now applied to this, and it means that we can't overlap this with other sounds in the same concurrency group. Um, so it's important that you notice that the concurrency groups are bunched together. So if I was going to apply this to other objects, they too would be affected by that same side effect. So if I had a bunch of people dropping the item all at the same time, I wouldn't want them to all be playing all at the same time. And that's where that max count comes in. So I probably would tweak this a little bit for my multiplayer game. So my max count here would actually go down something like to three or four. Let's do four. And do save.
There you go. If you like this how-to and want to see more how-tos, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find out more about how to support the channel and get access to all the videos early from just $1 a month. I say thank you to all the patrons and YouTube members for the continued support in the channel. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.